Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very welcome to be here and meeting you with like third time and introducing my third <laughs> progress report. And so my research, um, as you can see, my name is Kanti Tsikarma and my research area is the role of microRNA in renal fibrosis and their molecular pathways. And so I'm a second year PhD student at the Institute of Transition Medicine Department and my supervisor is Gabor Kekeni. And you also see our SMS and biostatistics here, our team. And my vision is to contribute to build the healthy communities, which is supported by evidence-based and transition medicine. And so in terms of my doctorate study, I would like to investigate a novel microRNA that plays important role in the kidney disease. And so I just came up with this research background with the program and with the team, I, at the beginning of the program, I set the two specific goal that's totally dependent on like microRNA and kidney disease. The first one, we were interested to find out the microRNA signature in human and animal studies. And so it has to be come from the microRNA for fighting studies, which means we got to deal with the big data. And the second one, we are interested in more evidence that means we wanted to look at the diagnostic accuracy of each microRNA in kidney disease. And so we set these two specific goals. And this is my uh, first project, you can see. We were interested in the signature of microRNA in different stage of kidney disease and also in different samples. You can also see our team here. It's the systematic review and meta-analysis. And we are working in these steps like article writing with the final results. And we also have dedicated journals, American Journal of Kidney Disease. And before I jump to the results and method, I would like to introduce a little bit background here and why we have to study microRNA and kidney disease. Actually, I would say the chronic kidney disease is a silent killer. Why? Because the world population, the 10% of the world population is affected by this kidney disease. And those people can lose up to 90% of their kidney function without any clinical symptoms. And we really have to be like it's alarm. And so we have to search for new therapeutic or diagnostic markers. And in the last 15 years, the micron is considered as a potential diagnostic biomarkers. And it has the potential to target the genes and also affect the protein expression by translation process. And so if you look at the scheme, the micron have a lot of interaction with the drugs and disease, and a gene, and molecular pathways. And in this kind of scheme and a lot of complicated concepts, we ask this specific question, which are the most dysregulated microRNA in human and animal chronic kidney disease? And according to our protocol, we also set the PICO framework here. We ask the specific goal and test the hypothesis. Now, I would like to introduce the flow of our method section. Let's say we have a thousand of article that's published in microRNA and kidney disease. And we were interested in different kinds of samples, for example, blood, urine, and kidney tissue. And the microRNA has to be tested by array or sequencing, any other techniques. And according to our protocol, we searched like 17,000 articles. In the Titan abstract, we had 400 articles. And finally, we had human dirty two, an animal dirty in study. And after that, we Actually, the main analytical method is the robustness aggregation in our study, and we extract the all microRNA lists and rank them in Excel, and then did the analysis in our language. And after that, we also performed the analysis of target genes and enrichment analysis too. And now I'm happy to introduce the little bit results section here, and you can see our results like. It mainly comes from robust aggregation, as I told you before, and outcome will be up and down regulated microRNAs, and there also be three different subgroups too. For human studies, we based on the sample types, we created three different analytical folds. For animal studies, we created like two different kidney tissue sample folds. And this is the preliminary results of our study. It was at the time it was preliminary, now it's a final. And in this heat map, you can see the each individual study and also each microRNA and the ranking score. It's the sample from my kidney tissue and it's upregulated microRNA. We found like six microRNA here. And this slide will show you the summary of all my study. 
And let's say in the right side of the screen, you can see the human studies. We had a urine samples in here, only four micron were down-regulated and one was up-regulated. On a blood sample, there were two micron were down, one up. In the kidney tissue, only three micron were down. And for animal study, we have two different uh, disease models. One is diabetic nephrobody, one is renal fibrosis. For the diabetic, it was two down and also five up in renal fibrosis and one is down. And we were also interested, if the micron is changing in the disease, we have to see what's the uh, signature of an early and late stage of kidney disease. We also made a robust rank aggregation in early stage of kidney disease and late. Interestingly, there were only two microns upregulated in early stage, but in the late stage, there were several microns were downregulated in urine and blood and kidney tissue. And so based on our findings, we can also search for the each gene location of it, each chromosomes of this microRNA. And for example, I just want to give you some example, like microRNA 181, it's uh, located at the uh, chromosome one, at the, it's uh, related with the SFHR1 gene deletion. It's like immunoglobulin A nephrobody. And so this slide will show the, the bar chart and this is the number of target genes that we investigated by each microRNA and sample type. We used this number to find out the molecular pathways. And this is the example our, the pathway neutron island analyzes. And it's a mice kidney tissue and upregulated microRNAs. And in here, we can see the fatty acid and frying disease, ECM receptor interaction in steroid biosynthesis were highly enriched in related with this microRNA. And in conclusion, uh, after we completed the study, we investigated the sample and stage-specific microRNA signature in kidney disease. And we also uh, found out the translation of animal studies in the human side. And we also investigated the molecular pathways of these microRNA signatures. Uh, it's worth to mention, we also have a, several study implications in clinical and translation medicine side. For example, in the clinical side, we can bring up the candidate microRNA further clinical trials in kidney disease. And also, we will bring up the sample-specific microRNA, for example, the blood tissue or urine. Uh, so we hope that we can make some improvement of diagnostic approach in this side. We also have a translation medicine uh, implication. It's the we investigate the molecular pathways and alternative treatment option, maybe in the future. And we also check the translation of animal studies. It's worth to mention, we also had a strain and limit. Especially in the animal studies, there was like a lot of data was missing. And if we are doing an animal study, it's better to like upload all full data. That's the message from my side <laughs> for the future studies. And also there was like, we only included the mouse studies for animal side because of the heterogeneity of the old data. And we also expect that maybe like doing a subgroup analyze based on the sample types that may decrease the sensitivity of our group analysis. And so now I would like to introduce my second project. In here, we, will, we are interested in diagnostic accuracy of microRNAs in chronic diseases, only human. It's also systematic review and meta-analysis. You can also see our team here. And I would like to introduce background. In every clinical settings nowadays, we are using serum creatinine or EGFR or proteinuria as, as a diagnostic marker. We also have a kidney biopsy. It's a golden standard to diagnose any disease, kidney disease, but we only can do this procedure if the risk outweighs the benefits. And so we all really need to find a new biomarker. And for example, micron 193 is a high sensitivity and specificity. And we also ask the question and set the framework, and our clinical <coughs> implication will be the diagnostic accuracy of this specific microRNA. And we follow the systematic research protocol, and now we are dealing with the data extraction process in this project. And so you can see our submission date here and our, our review. And now I would like to finish my talk saying Mongolian proverb, it's an English translation, where there is a world, there is a way. And thank you very much for your attention. I'm very welcome to questions.
Thank you. Um, I'm really appreciated with this uh, work. Um, my question is uh, that in the first uh, topic, uh, you were talking about human and uh, animal uh, studies and uh, also mentioned that uh, uh, the correlation between them. So after all, how far we can trust in uh, animal studies to be extrapolated to human studies? <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. And so I think it's better to make a conclusion based on my results because I didn't know about the other side of the animal study and human side. I'm just check this microRNA. And so based on the significant microRNA, it was totally different. There were no like similarity. And but we checked the first 15 dysregulated microRNA, but there were some overlap between animal and human. And so we couldn't really say it's not going to apply in all field. And so there is some traits we can compare with, but it's of course not the 100%. Okay. Yeah, but this is a very good question, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, very nice presentation. Um, you, you said at the beginning that uh, you're looking at the mostly dysregulated or, or the, the mRNAs that are dysregulated the most. How do you quantify dysregulation? So do you, do you have a threshold in the selection of the, of the data which you, don't have it, uh, uh, which you don't have at the raw level in order to look at, at a certain uh, threshold of change up or down? Thank you. Thank you, it's a very good question and good question too. And in a genetic studies, uh, they were using a specific method, it's a robust aggregation. In this method, we really no need to put a cut of values. We just have to rank the all genes based on the full genes and p-value. But the priority will be p-value, and that will, make, uh, that will give the results like which one is the more highly dysregulated one. And so we performed this analyzed using uh, the R language. It was much easier for us to perform. Thank you. Um, if I can ask that now you saw so many studies, I mean thousands of studies, uh, is this microRNA kind of pattern change, is this a cause or a consequence? What do you think? Kidney disease, this is promoting the disease or this is just markers of the changes and the severity? Yeah, thank you. Now, in this question, we have to back like the theory of this microRNA. There's the two alternative method. The first, the microRNA could lead to the disease, or maybe it can be changed by the disease itself. There's the two options. Yeah, I understand. But what do you think? What is your hypothesis on this, since you keep working on this yeah. in the future? Uh, there is this uh, microRNA, for example, in human, like we have 2,500 microRNA. From that, some of them might be dysregulated in early stage of disease, uh -huh. and we have to find out these microRNAs in the early stage. If in a late stage, we also have to identify which one is changed in late stage, and based on this data, analyzes, we can see and we can tell this microRNA can predict this specific disease, it, this specific stage. Okay, so this is the future. Just yeah. set up your hypothesis again. And, and this is not very easy, I understand, if so many I mean, variables are there. But there might, must be some very important key, key factors here. Thank you.